We interrupt our program to bring you a special broadcast. Boom! Headshot! Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another League of Legends video. This time I want to focus on a specific build for Ezreal that has become very popular uh, in the Taiwanese server. Uh, it's also seeing a lot of uh, buzz on the pro scene in the NALCS. Um, as of this last, uh, towards the end in like week 10 or so, and even in the playoffs. Um, and it's uh, it's a really cool build, and I wanted to uh, explain it and talk about it and why it's so effective. Um, it's it's referred to mostly as Ezreal's blue build, uh, mostly because all of his items tend to be blue. Um, but it's just, it's a really cool build, and I think that it has um, a lot going for it. And I just wanted to explain it and talk about why I think it's so good. Uh, I was playing it in this game and I had a lot of success with it. I've actually had a lot of success success in general with it. Um, and so uh, let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, uh, I want to explain it its basics first before I get into it. Uh, the basics revolve around about three core items. Uh, one of them is the Spirit of the Elder Lizard. The second would be the Man Immune. And the last third would be your Iceborne Gauntlets. Those three items are kind of your basic core. You can also maybe throw the Ionian Boots in there as well. Um, but, uh, overall it is extremely c powerful, um, and it does a number of things for you. Number one, it gives you extremely cost-efficient damage. Um, if you take a look at something like specifically the Spirit of the Elder Lizard, it gives you 45 AD and 10% CDR, 14 health regen, 7 mana regen, and then, uh, two really nice, well, I guess one really nice passive, which gives you that true damage on hit. I mean, if you think about... Uh, for 2,000 gold, I mean, a, B a BF sword gives you 45 damage alone for 1,550. So for another 450 gold, you're getting 10% CDR, 14 health regen, 7 mana regen, and then damage over time, true damage in your passive. Um, I mean, that alone is just, it's pretty, pretty powerful. I mean, if, even if you just factor in the passive, uh, you know, 400 gold for 10 damage, uh, you know, if you're doing about, it's a 6 and 40 based on level and true damage per level. Uh, so that alone just makes it cost efficient. And then you've got the 10% CDR, the health regen, the mana regen. I mean, it is just extremely cost efficient. Uh, it's intended to be a jungler item, and I know that jungler items in general are um, designed to be very cost efficient because the jungle does generally does not have as much gold, especially if you watch some of the higher leveled junglers in the NALCS, you'll see that they just don't get up the same CS numbers. Um, it's maybe not as, not as true in lower, like, uh, ELOs or rankings, but just because the quality of play isn't quite so good. But um, it's a jungler item, so it's very cost efficient, and that's one of the reasons why it's so good. Now, the second item, your tier of the goddess into a mana mute, into a mirror mana, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is really, really nice because it allows Ezreal to have the mana to spam his Q, and that is an essential part of this build. Uh, you know, getting as many Q procs off as you can is really core to this build. Um, but uh, building up an early tier into the mana mute is really nice. It gives you damage, and it also allows you to turn all that big mana pool you have into extra AD. So you can spam your Q, and you've got plenty of mana to do so, and because you're building some mana with some of your other items, you get the benefits of it with extra AD. Um, and then lastly, synergizing with this is the Iceborne Gauntlets. Now this gives you ability power, mana, armor, and CDR. All of those things work so, so nicely, and then when you factor on the fantastically wonderful passive that it brings, it just throws it over the top. So, the ability power works well with Ezreal because he actually is a pretty significant mana or ability power carry. You know, one of the 80 carries who uh, uses a lot of magic damage. You know, his E does magic damage, his Q does magic damage, his ultimate does magic damage. So does his W, but I actually don't know if I ever used my W once in this game. That's just my, how I play Ezreal. Not saying it's the best way, that's just kind of the way that I do it. But, um... That ability power does not go to waste on Ezreal, and that's really big, because you definitely don't want anything to be going to waste, especially with a build like this, which is so cost-efficient. Now, the mana, 500 mana, you know, this is one thing where this build would not work for any, any, without the Mira mana, because when you get that mana, you turn it into bonus attack damage, because the Mira mana will actually convert... Um, you know, attack damage equal to 2% of your maximum mana. So if you're building up a lot of mana, you're going to get a lot of AD. Um, 
I, I want to say it comes out to somewhere around like 40 or 45, something like that. I'm not really exactly sure exactly how much AD you get with the mirror mana, but it's pretty significant. Um, so the mana you get from your Iceborne Gauntlets just gets translated into more damage. Then you get 70 armor. That is really significant. Building, getting t some tankiness on your AD carry is really, really useful. Um, and then lastly, that passive. Um, you know, first of all, I, I, let me just m t make sure that I get this. It, it builds out of a sheen, which is really nice. So after you use an ability, the next basic attack will deal bonus damage. And then it will create a field around the target for two seconds that slows uh, enemy movement speed by 30 seconds. And it's actually uh, uh, it's actually half-sized field if it's ranged. So um, you're getting the, the bonus damage from the sheen component. As you can see, we're in a little bit of trouble here, but Lulu's going to save me. Thank you so much, Lulu. You're the best. Um, this Lulu player is actually really, really good this game. But let's continue talking about the Iceborne Gauntlet. So you get the Sheen effect where after you, every time you use your Q, the, your next attack does bonus damage. And then you get that AoE slow, 30% uh, slow. I mean, that's, that is really significant um, from this Iceborne Gauntlet. And so it's just, it's just really powerful. As you can see, I get totally dumped on there by a really nice Condemn. Going to go ahead and use my E to, oh, and I get, or using my uh, barrier to make sure that I stay alive, get another poke off, and then run away home. So, uh, yeah, that's your basic core. So the idea here is that you are extremely mobile, you get 40% CDR, you build damage, and you get the, uh, you know, the you've got the procs from your Q and your auto attacks. Uh, all, all of that just kind of comes together into this really nice little package. You know, you've got the Spear of the Elder Lizard, which gives you damage, and it gives you that nice uh, true damage passive, 10% CDR. Got that Mirror Manic to convert all the mana into extra AD, uh, and it gives you enough mana that you can spam your Q constantly. Then the Iceborne Gauntlets really brings it all together, gives you um, that really nice slow, so it allows you to almost permakite. I mean, there, and with Ezreal, he's, he's got his E to escape, with 10% CDR, you're going to be having a lot of ability, or your E is going to be off cooldown a lot. So he's going to be extremely slippery. Then when you add that AoE slow, I mean, he's just going to be cutting people for days. Uh, it just makes Ezreal really, really popular. And I would say that the reason why that this build has come really into its own is because in Season 3, I would say, has really been the rise of the Bruisers. You know, champions who are tanky DPS, who can really get in your face and make life difficult for you. Those types of champions have really become popular, I would say, in Season 3. And it's made AD Carry a difficult role to play. If you if you watch uh, the pro scene, I would say that the AD Carry role has really fallen back. It's not been the traditionally dominant role that it uh, always used to be. Uh, it has not been this just powerhouse source for a team. It has been a role that uh, is it's getting picked on a little bit. But this type of a build really allows you to deal with those bruiser type champions. It really gives you the capability to go toe to toe with them and deal with them. Because you've got extremely high mobility, you have um, kiting, you've got damage, you've got cooldown reduction. I mean, all of those things come together on Israel so, so nicely in ways that just don't work on other champions. And it works with him because, number one, he has a mix of AD and AP abilities. It works, number two, because of his Q. It's long range, it's low cooldown, and it procs all of those on-hit effects, you know, from the Iceborne Gauntlets and from the um, Spirit of the Elder Lizard. Then you get the cooldown reduction to allow you to really spam those abilities. Um, it just makes it really potent, specifically on Ezreal. And I'm not really sure if any other AD carry could really pull it off in the same way that he does, just because his kit, it works so effectively for this style. Highly mobile, excellent at kiting, um, and you're not really expected to be this raw damage source. If you think about a champion like Vayne, um, you know, you are a damage dealer. Your job is to just absolutely stomp on people's faces. But, uh, you know, with Ezreal, you are much more of a utility. You're a pest. You are a kiter. Um, all of those things come together. And, you know, because really, I don't know if that if, if it's really possible for AD carries to function like they used to. It's just a different game. It's a different mindset. And uh, it just requires that you play a little bit differently. Now, all these items, I think, really come together and enable that. So... Uh, to finish it off, I also would consider something like a Last Whisper to give you the armor penetration, maybe even a uh, 
the player of the Rune King to give you percentage health damage against high HP enemies. Those are good choices as well. Uh, and also, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but you want to get cooldown reduction boots. Um, and actually, they got a little bit of a price uh, drop in the latest patch, which is really, really nice for this build. So, um, overall, that's the build. That's the reason why it works so well. And it's just, it's a lot of fun to play. You know, especially once you get those three core items, the Man Immune, the Spirit of the Elder Lizard, and the Iceborne Gauntlets. And you start cutting people, you start jumping all over the place, you're spamming Qs. It's just really nice. Um... And, uh, and you don't really need to worry about building any attack speed, just because your Q gets on such a low cooldown that it almost does not even matter. Um, I want to say st standard, the cooldown is 4 seconds at max rank. Then with 40% CDR, that's going to drop it to something like 2.4 seconds or something like that. Then um, it also has that passive where if you hit an enemy, it reduces by 1 second. So that's like 1.4 seconds. I mean, that's, that's literally spammable. Um, is a really nice ultimate there by Sejuani, and a uh, really, really nice ultimate by Lulu to follow that up. I'm just trying to continue to DPS down. Actually, Lulu, he's going to fall, and we're all in trouble. Lulu is going to save my life. Uh, some nice ultimates there, but we were not able to, ans to end it up in a kill, and that's just too bad. But um, it did put us in a pretty good position as Lulu, and uh, actually when I watched, I ended up running away, but this was pretty funny. Lulu and... Uh, Baseball bat, Trundle, reworked Trundle, are just uh, kind of tangling back and forth. Uh, Vayne is going to be poking at this tower, but, um, oh wait, what's up, Trundle? He's going in for the dive, and he is going to be in trouble here. Lulu with a nice slow. Oh, man, just one more auto attack would have been enough. And then I actually am on my way back. Let's see if I fire down an ultimate. No, I don't. I just, uh, Ari picks up the kill. So good job by Ari there. Um... Ooh, there goes the ultimate to clear out this wave to make sure that they do not sh finish off any more damage on this tower. Um, so yeah, feeling good about that. Now I was able to pick up my Spirit of the Elder Lizard on my first back. And uh, this is actually a, something where this build is still pretty young. And I would not say that like the optimal path to those three items has been fully discovered yet. And I want to talk about why. Because I've seen some variations on this build. Um, and I want to cover a couple of them. Now, one of the things that I have seen is that not everybody uh, starts with a, such a strange start. You know, I rush straight away for the Spirit of the Elder Lizard. I bought some long swords to start off with, maybe got boots early on, but I uh, didn't really get the Sightstone right away, but focused, or not the Sightstone, the, um, I don't even know what it is, the, the Spirit Stone. But my first item was this uh, Spirit of the Elder Lizard. Now, I've seen some people who will actually go for the early tier and then start stacking it up right away. That's not a bad option, but uh, it definitely leaves you very weak in the early game. And then I've also seen other people just start off with a very standard start where they go with a Bloodthirster. You know, start off with the BF Sword their first trip back and then rush straight to a Bloodthirster and then go to the Spirit of the Elder Lizard, then the Full Mirror Mana, then the Iceborne Gauntlets. That's another way you could do it. I would say that build is a little bit more of like a standard build that's just kind of tweaked for this style, um, where you're not fully committing to really trying it out in its entirety. But that's definitely viable. And I want to say that, you know, if you're starting off with an early BF sword, that gives you a pretty tremendous advantage in lane. You know, early laning is all about flat AD. You want to go for flat AD marks and quints for the most part, and you want that extra damage just for last hitting primarily, also for trading with your opponent. You're probably not, neither of you can have a lot of attack speed. Um, so it's all pretty much about flat AD. And so not going for a tremendous amount of flat AD right away, it really, uh, you know, changes things. And it really changes the dynamic of your build. Why? Well, if I, only I would have hit Terry Grip. doesn't matter, I end up picking up the kill anyways. Uh, there's my first kill of the game. <coughs> but... So good job by Lulu. Another excellent uh, set of ultimates there by Lulu. Good job. Although she only has one ultimate. Whoops. But anyways, um, compared to standard builds, you don't have that early power spike when you complete a Bloodthirster or an Infinity Edge. You just have this big power spike, and it helps you with laning, helps you with last hitting, helps you with pushing, helps you with trading. Now, I wouldn't say that this build really does that in the same way. It's just different in that regard. But um, like I was saying... With Ezreal, you have the mobility, you have his Q, and those things, I think, really allow you to get away with not stacking so much flat AD right away. You know, you just don't really need to do it in the same way that you do with other AD carries. But it's something to keep in mind, that if you really like 
you know, that early damage power spike with something like a Bloodthirster. I mean, you can definitely do it. It's still very viable. And I'm getting another kill there on Vayne with my ultimate. Good job by Sejuani to dive in. And I'm happy that I was able to clean up the kill there. Um, but, you know, this game definitely changes the feel that of an AD carries play early on. You know, you don't have the same level of, uh, you know, early game power spiking. But once you start, so you can see right here, I go back, I finish my uh, Mira Mana. Um, and uh, I'm starting to feel really powerful. I've got up to 196 AD, and that's only going up, um, you know, because I just got my Mana Mune, actually. Not Mira Mana, Mana Mune. Um, and once that starts stacking, that's going to, and gets transformed, that's just going to get me even more damage. Um, so, yeah. Personally, I think that you should just go for it. Go for the Spirit of the Elder Lizard right away. Uh, and then just go right into the uh, Mirror Mana right after that. I have tried getting an early tier, and I think I like going for the early uh, Spirit first. I think that that is a better first item. And the early tier just kind of sets you back a little bit. Uh, I'm going to throw in my ulti. Going to get two ticks there on the Vayne and Rumble, and then chase in. Too bad Vayne got, did not get, we did not finish that kill. We're going to follow in here on the Rumble. And I'm uh, going to be using my Qs, my E, where's the E? There's the Q and the E, and finishing them up there. Feeling really good about that. And now we see Tarek, and we think, hey, why not? We're feeling strong. Let's go ahead and follow him. A really nice charm there. He's going to flash away. Uh, <coughs> and I'm just going to follow in here. Oh, we're getting a nice stun there on a Lulu, but I'm not scared. I'm going in, and I'm chasing headlong for Vayne, even though I get... Exhausted. Exhaust, actually, the nice thing is that Ezreal does not suffer from exhaust because he doesn't really focus that much on attack speed. He's got his Q. Um, you really just don't have to worry about it quite so much. So, uh, some good trades there. I'm up to 3 and 0. I'm up about 30 CS on Vayne. You know, this mid game has been really nice to me. Uh, and I'm really gearing up to hopefully get in a Sheen soon and then get finish that Iceborne Gauntlets. And once I complete that, I'm going to be really strong. You know, it's about that 25-minute mark or so in the mid-game where this build is extremely strong. And you'll see it, that uh, things just start going really well for me once I uh, finish that last bit of my item build. But um, that's pretty much it for your core. And then beyond that, it's mostly just about adapting it to the specific game situation. But uh, it's a really fun build, and uh, you know, just a couple of quick notes about it. With as with any Ezreal build, really, Ezreal is a lot about skill shots. He has a lot about uh, positioning and being really slippery and and mobile. Um, you can see in this game, you can see I'm there. I pick up my Sheen and another uh, blue crystal uh, just to give myself some little bit extra mana, building towards that Iceborne Gauntlets. Uh, gonna get my CDR boots pretty quickly here soon too, as we're chasing in onto Trundle. Oh, a nice slow. Oh, he dodged my ulti, but you cannot dodge my Qs. Oh, yes, actually you can. But it looks like Ari's gonna die, gonna chase him off, and I'm gonna pick up the belt. There we go. Ari got condemned. Ooh, but nice, nice Lulu ultimate, and Ari is gonna go ahead and then really nice transfigure motion, whatever, and really nice kill there on Devane to turn that one around, and I'm gonna pick up the kill onto Tarek. So I'm getting nice and fed. 5 0 1, really pulling away from Vayne who's going with a very traditional AD carry build. Um, and it just shows you, you know, at this point in the game, I've got, uh, you know, this 34% CDR with a blue buff. That is not to be underestimated. My Q is on a 2.6 second cooldown. My E is on a 7 second cooldown. And having that little blink every 7 seconds, are you serious? That's amazing. My ultimate is on a 52 second cooldown. Um... That's another really nice thing about this build, is you can be really, really liberal with uh, spamming your ultimate. I mean, you can just throw that thing out whenever you want. There goes another one just to clear out this wave before I head back. Why not? Um, it just, uh, it really opens up a lot of new possibilities with Ezreal, and it really capitalizes, I would say, on a lot of his strengths. You know, his mobility, his uh, versatility with his Q. Um, you know, those two things in particular. You know, the b fact that his Q acts much like just an extended auto attack. It's just a really useful build. Um, not, don't quite have enough gold for to finish up my uh, s my Iceborne Gauntlet, so I'm just trying to get a little bit more gold for that. Going to try to roam and help my, my team where I can. Getting a little bit overextended there, so we're going to back out. Clearing out some more minion waves. Continuing to farm. Uh, uh, leading the game in farm currently. Uh, actually, no, Jace is ahead of me, so throwing down an ultimate, just try to 
chunk any when I can as my team fights. So I'm going to do a sneaky little jump in here back the red red buff. And uh, even though the red buff was totally eating all of my Qs. And there goes a nice kill. And I pick up the kill on Trendle. And then uh, Ari picks up a nice kill there. Jace also picking up a kill as well. Um, so really fantastic team fight by my team. And there's the surrender. So I actually didn't even get a finished age one gauntlets. Oh, unbelievable. But you just have to take my word for it that once you finish it off, you are a powerhouse with that AoE slow. You become an absolute pest in team fights, um, and it's just a really strong and fun build. So if you guys are, if you guys have seen it and you're wondering what's going on, it's the blue build made famous by I believe his name is BB from uh, the TPA Ta Taiwan Assassins or whatever uh, the Chinese professional team is. It is extremely fun. An interesting Ezreal build that really works well in this uh, current Bruiser meta. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely leave me some comments down below what you think about this blue build. Um, and I will see you again soon.